What is the euro dollar market? Sometimes this gets confused with the euro currency and in our current situation of crazy high interest rates, uh, this question of how it impacts the euro dollars come up. So we're gonna cover that in today's video. Hello and welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about the euro dollar market. What is the euro dollar market? Why do we care about it? And how is it relevant in this crazy economic situation we're in? I'm recording this sort of late 2022, it's September, and we are in a situation of rising interest rates, lots of kind of panic and anxiety around financial markets. Uh, so we're going to talk about how that ties into the euro dollar situation. All right, so I got a little infographic here that you can follow along with, and let's dig in. All right, so when I used to hear about this before I understood what it was, I assumed that the euro dollar market was where you exchange euros for dollars. That seemed like a very logical conclusion to me, but it actually has nothing to do with the euro currency at all. So what happens is in our era of global trade, a country will sell products to the United States and they have to sell them in, they get paid in dollars. So let's just use the example of like China, for example. So China will make widgets, they sell them to the United States and they get paid in dollars. Well, they have a couple choices, right? They could convert those dollars to their currency. It's one option, they probably might do that with some of it. But for the most part, they're going to have to buy more stuff from somewhere else at some point in dollars. So why, why exchange it? Now, people who have tons of money like banks and countries, they don't like their money to just sit there doing nothing. So they will deposit their money somewhere where it can be loaned out for interest. Now, they could deposit it in a U.S. bank, but there's a lot of rules around lending in U.S. banks. So this market emerged after World War II where countries primarily would deposit their dollars in a bank in Europe and they were outside of the regulations for U.S. banks so they could kind of do riskier lending. They could do short term, high interest, they don't have to have all this collateral and um, they were able to sort of make more money on their money. Uh, outside of the banking system. And this started with banks in Europe, hence the label euro dollar, but it has nothing to do with the euro currency at all. And it's become like massively huge. Like I, It's hard to know because it's not regulated. This falls under this concept called shadow banking, which you might have heard of. And shadow banking, when I first heard that label, I thought it was like shady and like secretive. Maybe it's like organized crime. All it really means is that it operates in the shadow of the regulated banking system and it's not part of literally the structured banking rules. So they're perfectly legitimate companies that are in shadow banking, like hedge funds and asset managers. They're just not banks. Some econ somebody made up that label and it kind of stuck, like that was never like an official label that was assigned. So the euro dollar market's kind of part of this outside of the regulated banking world. Uh, I mean, I have this number on here, it's trillions, trillions of dollars that is in this. So it's serious money. And a lot of the money now is actually held in like the Caribbean and the Caymans and Bahamas, which is why those areas are attractive for very wealthy people because they have pretty cool, relaxed banking rules. Uh, and generally, this euro dollar market serves very high value loans. Like, you're not going to the euro dollar market to borrow like 50 bucks or $1,000. It's generally a $100,000 minimum, and most of these loans are at least $5 million. They're also short term loans. So, it's like, if you watch my video about how trade finance works is a lot of parts of the economy they don't pay for things in cash like everything's paid for in credit so if i need to order something from one place and get it to another place there's like this gap where i have to have paid for it before i get paid back so i just need short-term financing to cover that 
because I'm not going to get paid until it gets delivered. So we have this sort of gap. And that's what these types of loans are perfect for. I'm not like, the, people aren't borrowing this to go build something that's going to take years. It's like, hey, I need to do a trade deal. And I'm, I need to pay for it a week before I get paid back. So I need something to cover that time period. Kind of like what we as civilians, citizens, whatever, would use a credit card for. It's kind of like credit card for countries. Now, there's uh, some concerns with the U.S. banking system and the Federal Reserve System that this is this whole market that operates outside of their control and then kind of affect things in the global economy, like it could lead to instability in markets. So I think there's some... Uh, unhappiness on the part of the Fed that this market that's outside of their purview has gotten so big. Uh, and this is where a lot of European countries and banks will fund things. Because for the most part at this point, most of the global economy is paid for in dollars. There were even rules until recently that all oil had to be bought and sold in dollars. So it's nothing really to do with the United States as much as the fact that after 1944, the U.S. dollar was set as global reserve currency. So everybody was just buying and selling in dollars. So it created this massive market for dollars and people get paid in dollars. They want something to do with their profits. And it enabled this whole like cottage industry of sorts to emerge kind of just as a result of the situation. And what happened, like the origin of it was a lot of countries like Japan, for example, after World War II, they rebuilt their economy by manufacturing and exporting products to the United States. So they got paid in dollars. So they had to do something with the profits. Sometimes they bought US treasuries like bonds. Sometimes they put it into the Euro, Euro dollar market. But this is why a lot of countries ended up owning a ton of bonds the U, uh, issued by the US because they had all this profit that they got paid for in dollars. China is the same way. China has a ton of securities. They've been selling them off. But, uh, you know, back in the late 80s, I guess, early 90s, when Japan was kind of at the peak of its economic success, they owned a ton of stuff. Like they owned a lot of the real estate, even in the United States, a lot of treasuries. Um, and that was kind of a function of the fact that they were getting paid for all their stuff in dollars. And it kind of created this euro dollar market. Now the euro dollar market, by the way, the banks do not have to be in Europe. So as I said, the, many of them are in the Caymans or Bahamas. It's just simply a label for big money banking that exists outside of the US banking system, but is done in dollars. And these are generally very short term loans. Sometimes they're even overnight. And the US actually has a sort of similar short term service um, for banks within the US called the repo market. If you ever heard of that, I'll do a separate video on that. But these are all these sort of si these systems that were created to help banks and countries kind of move money around. It's funny thing is when you look at a lot of these global financial services, they generally are just this constant movement of big amounts of money from one to the other and they keep charging each other percentages. And it's almost like a hot potato, like here you catch, all right, now you get the money. <laughs> They're just moving money around. And this is one of those services that ultimately is just a place for people to park money so that they are able to get some value and some interest off of it. Um, and there, there are higher interest rates, but they're, it's riskier. Like there's no FDIC insurance or regulation or whatever. So if uh, countries made really bad moves and lent money that didn't get paid back, you know, they could be stuck and it could lead to situations where a currency gets destabilized because they've, like, you know, they've lost so much. So that's why those who are on the regulation side, like the Fed, who want stability in the markets, I can see why they're not a fan of this. And I think um, from my research, it is the largest market for international short-term lending. So it's a big, a big thing. Uh, and right now we're seeing this situation so where the Fed has raised interest rates and it is very much impacting this euro dollar market. And what could happen is, is if people... Uh, are scared to lend or it's too expensive to borrow, then you end up in this situation where money stops flowing. The velocity of money goes down. I'll put my link to my comments about that video. But then 
you know, the economy kind of locks up because if people are not moving money throughout to buy stuff and exchange goods and services, it means that nobody's getting paid, resources aren't getting to people, and it kind of locks things up and, and can create tough situations. Let's use energy, energy for example. You know, energy is a big part of the economy. If there's no money to buy energy, then people don't get it. Same thing with food. If food's a big part of the economy, if there's no money for like a distributor to order a whole bunch of food that would go to a grocery store, if it locks up because there's no financing, then people don't get the stuff they need. So there are real world consequences to something like the euro dollar market breaking down. Um, but just wanted to explain to you what it was. It has nothing to do with the euro currency. It's only named euro dollar because that's what originated. But for the most part, a lot of this trading exists outside of the US. All right, so we've got some more links in the comments if you want to read more. And if you'd like to join our membership, Two Steps Ahead, to where we dig in much more deeply into a lot of these topics, the link for that is in the show notes or the comments as well. All right, we'll see you in the next video.